Hi, my name is Alexandre Vanderer. Hi, my name is Piero Galofaro. I am Fernando Rossignol. We're going to talk about the Alison between Hello and his son, evaluate and analyze uh, this case study to understand how Carlos Gosman led this alliance, the successful alliance between these two big companies. In 1998, his son was in imminent risk of bankruptcy. The their uh, financial situation was not uh, so good. The net, uh, net debt was $22 billion at the moment. A group from Nissan and Renault, they started to search for a kind of mutual cooperation between the, the companies. And Carlos Ghost was transferred from Paris to Tokyo to work at COO or uh, Chief Operation Ops of the, the company. He was in charge of NRP, Nissan Recovery Plan, regardless of Japanese resistance for change. We found some controversial amendments on this case study. One of them is meritocracy rather than seniority. In Japan, they use a lot of uh, seniority criteria to career development, and it's not so usual uh, for Carlos Goss. And reduction of the extensive supply chain uh, they, in Japan, they call Keiretsu, and they, uh, they are planning to reduce this, this chain. Was it good or not? Well, at first, in, in, sh in short term, they, they, we found some disturbances, but uh, the company's full recovery was achieved, so they, they could uh, achieve this, this goal. And all the stakeholders and the, the Japanese community, they, have, they had some benefit with the, with the, the, the project. So this global alliance started on 27th of um, uh, March of 1999. Capital increase of Renault over Nissan was uh, 5.4 billion dollars, and the French company held 36.8% stake of uh, uh, stake in Japanese. CEO Carlos uh, Goss, as I, I mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, 20 executives, they were there to integrate teams, address some issues, and develop an action plan called uh, Nissan Revival Plan. Okay, I would like to give you a context why this alliance was necessary for both companies. In one side, Renault, their sales was concentrated 84.5% on Western Europe and on this 84.5%, 32% was concentrated in domestic sales. So they were basically sale, selling uh, cars on the domestic market, con uh, concentrated in Eastern Europe. And they had a high market share in Latin America, specifically in Brazil, and they were looking for more sales on North America, where the money is concentrated. And they were lacking technology. Basically, uh, Japanese companies, they have more technology than European companies. That's the group of elements that make Renault go looking for a new partner. So develop technology and to make presence in more developed markets as North America, as United States. In other hand, Nissan, they were looking for a partner because in 1998, they were fighting against bankruptcy, financial insolvency. So it was mandatory to find a partner to solve these financial problems. And margin profitability decreasing, a high purchasing costs and low uh, profits. Some bad decisions decrease Nissan revenues like uh, in, at the same time, other companies were looking for and developing stylish car, car for that customers were claiming and cars that anyone were looking for. Nissan, they just had focus on reliable cars, small cars, 
and low consuming cars. So that wasn't what customers were looking for. So sales decreasing and costs increasing. So that's why they were in a bad financial situation. Okay, let's talk now about NRP, which is the Nissan Revival Plan. After the, they confirmed the alliance between Renault and Nissan, Renault decided three senior managers to occup key positions in Nissan. One of those, and taking the leadership, was Carlos Ghosn. So, Carlos Ghosn decided and addressed three main goals, which was Nissan would be profitable at the end of 2002, Second one, business debt would be reduced by 50% until the end of 2003. And the third one would be the return on equity would be at least 4.5% by the end of 2002. That's clearly huge goals. So it was a big challenge for Carlos Gosling. So at the first impression, he generated reproduction of public opinion for a striking Japanese tradition. That's a kind of risk situation, since Japanese people are very, very traditional. In short term result, it would produce 21,000 fired employees. Indirect impact on the chain of Japanese supplier, which was the Keretsu. Keretsu is the kind of business model created by automotive Japanese companies on where each one owns a small percentage of each company. So they were all those companies trying to grow, grow together, okay? What is the most controversial points? So introduce the product promotion system by meritocracy, not by seniority. So in this way, they, they, were, they were trying to create a challenge scenario inside a company. So those guys who were seniors, they wouldn't be like sitting on their positions. They would invest on young people to reach their goals and to be outstanding on their goals to reach biggest positions. That's a kind of challenge inside a company. He closed five factories to cut production costs. It's good to mention that factories wasn't producing most as they can. So these factories was like not giving profitability to the company and complete extinction of the character system program Japanese supply chain as I said so it was completely against the Jap Japanese tradition it was very controversial points and could bring him serious problems so God's decisions was despite of internal and external pressures he continued the NRP implementation in an interview to Financial Times, he declared, we are not missionaries. We are not in the business of changing cultures, but of maximization performance. He rejected hiring consultants to saving time, external consulting to saving time and money and confidence on his team diagnosis. Uh, I would say it's important to say Carlos Zagos declared uh, just that Nisa employees could understand better than anyone and any external consultant where was the problems how can we address these problems and solve these problems and bring solutions for that that's why he decided to take these solutions inside a company because just employees could see where the problem is the project was composed by 200 people in nine different teams so it was a big project inside a company just to solve these problems so basically inside any department there was one specific people to address to find and try to build a solution for this kind of problem they addressed 2,000 ideas and submitted 400 proposals to the executive committee so just people inside these departments could see, okay, we have a problem here, and to solve this problem, the best solution is that. 400 proposals were submitted. So before I say about the criteria to analyze the project results, I would say uh, that was the best decision to Carlos Gosling go through. 
uh, okay, he was going against the Japanese tradition. He was going behind the Japanese people claims. But there was the only way to solve the same problem. Because if he was doing exactly the same as his, uh, the guys before him was doing, to move from Europe to come to Japan and do exactly the same as these guys were doing, it wouldn't solve the Nissan problems. So I would say it's important to say Carlos Ghosn declared by public if these controversial uh, decisions he took wasn't successful, he would give up. Like he would leave the company because that's the only way he could get the people confidence and people give him confidence. So Carlos Ghosn took the right decision to go through, which was the NRP, which he built on his own and his uh, board team. To evaluate this case, we defined three criteria uh, uh, with, uh, with our financial performance, operational performance, and risk level, which brings with uh, um, organizational theory. Under the criteria financial performance, we observe that uh, cards goes with the NRP plan uh, could achieve the all the goals uh, one year earlier, which was the fiscal year of 2001 instead of the fiscal year 2002. <clears throat> what means that uh, uh, under this criteria uh, they they had extremely successful in, in, in their uh, goals. About operational performance, uh, it was extremely successful uh, in terms of uh, reduction of costs and the purchase the purchase system. Uh, Carlos Goss was committed in in strength the in strength the, the base of suppliers, the supplier base, and they could do it before uh, uh, before the deadline, which 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 bring which brought the the Nissan to uh, uh, shrink by forty percent in supplier base, reduction of reduction twenty percent of the purchase costs, and uh, all the all the all the changes uh, established uh, could be uh, could be analyzed or reflected at the number in this uh, in this index the return on investment capital invested capital which increased from 1.3 percent to in the, the fiscal year 99 to 19.8 percent on the fiscal year. To, uh, 2002. About the risk level, uh, we we found three uh, three points that would be emphasized. Uh, brain drain, uh, brain drain. Uh, uh, the NRP didn't take in account uh, the risk to. Uh, to lose the Japanese cooperation uh, or uh, the, the the talent people uh, leaving the company because they they were just displeased with the new uh, with the new uh, plan for Nissan. Uh, social resistance, which was another risk, the public opinion. The uh, uh, from the newspapers uh, in Japan, the, the Japanese society, and the um, and the, the and even the team side of Nissan that was uh, that didn't agree with the NRP and needed to work on that. Uh, and the operational and financial results were achieved before. NRP forecasts, which means uh, 
we understand that Carlos Gosling uh, took um, over risk running. He running over risk. He ran it over risk than it was necessary. So he assumed risk in about the organizational, uh, the organizational organizational behavior and team. And he assumed the risk in the public opinion, and he could face it uh, strikes, uh, people going strike. The, he could face it uh, brain, brain drain, but uh, he didn't take care of this, as we uh, uh, at least at the NERP plan um, uh, showed to us. That's why. In spite of, although we uh, agree with the NRP and Gosling decision, uh, these decisions uh, only would be supported uh, uh, by us if uh, there was an uh, action plan working along the, the plan, the NRP. And here, uh, uh, would be the action plan uh, to have clear and effective communication to uh, to be open for the society or for the, the, the public opinion and even for the employees to uh, to explain the the final results after a little a short term trouble uh, how to reach pre-established goals and disciplined plan execution. Uh, these, uh, those, uh, those talks are in our action plan that, that would make us support this NRP program. Otherwise, Carlos Goss was just running over risk to achieve the results, what could be not worth. And could this risk could could became true? Our conclusions come to the alliance between the companies was the right decision and the, and the the great way to make the companies help financial and operating. <clears throat> NERP uh, recovered in some although the high risks assume it. Renault increased sales to compete with Volkswagen and Renault could keep uh, competitive, competitive in the market with major different markets besides Europe. Thank you for watching.